We're gonna have a great show today. Excited to continue our series on the thyroid. So let's get started. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Welcome to this morning's A Different Perspective. I am always so glad and excited you guys show up every Saturday. And for you guys that also watch this on the recording, thank you so much for joining us in this wonderful show as we try to give you the greatest information that you can apply to your health every day. And that's one thing that uh, I had somebody email me and I read this morning as I was sitting here sipping on my lime water. And uh, they said, Doc, you know, what's the purpose of the show? is and why don't you do a podcast man ask travis you see we laugh we i hate podcasts i get interviewed them on all the time even though i have to tell it's kind of funny actually i just had a pretty cool podcast i mean i mean I, it was kind of neat we were sitting here and and i took a picture of it that way um i got uh interviewed from a doctor from india which will be posted i think it'd be posted yesterday or today that way but um, yeah, it's kind of great. I get interviewed by many docs from all over the world of all different kinds on the perspective that we put on the show. But it's kind of the same story. It's like, okay, uh, how'd you become a doc? What happened? How'd you figure out the hormone stuff? And cool, estrogen's not a hormone. <laughs> That's basically every podcast. And they're like, oh my goodness, you mean we should measure all the estrogens? Yes, that's what does happen. So anyways, long story short, Welcome everybody uh, to the wonderful show that we do on a regular basis is trying to teach you, trying to give the information that you can take and apply to your health daily. So I do appreciate that, that you guys watch because it's more of a training. It's more of a video to where I, I have put up slides so you guys can see them. You can write them down. You can watch it over and over again, and it gives you great information that you can change your life. That being said, something that's been life changing, as you can see here, we did over last month is our no sugar challenge. Our no sugar challenge was amazing. It was nothing more than hundreds of thousands of people saying, hey, listen, I think I eat a little too much sugar, including myself. You know saying? Um, it's not a joke. Uh, we try to eat perfectly in every single way as far as you no know, chemicals, uh, keep gluten away, you know, keep all the processed foods away. Uh, but even when you try to eat extremely healthy, sometimes you can eat too much sugar. In the forms of even fruit and breads, a lot of people do not realize, a lot of people tell me, say, well, doc, you know, it's gluten-free. Gluten-free is better than having gluten, but basically it's just going to a better form of sugar because you went from white bread to a gluten-free piece of bread, which is very commonly just sugar and very available glucose. That can cause a lot of issues that way. So uh, we just all got together and said for the month of January, let's do this. And the emails and the messages have been incredible even po people posting on their pictures. Now, what we're probably gonna do is probably around April or May, we're probably gonna do it again, No Sugar Month, because it's a great time to, you know, as it gets warmer weather out there, the more everybody says, they start putting on those bikinis and on those shorts, everybody wants to trim up and lose a bit of weight. So we'll probably do it again for everybody, because it's always nice to do it within a group, because it's just much easier to suffer together, as everybody did. That being said, guys, every Saturday morning, I just do a wonderful job of popping on my uh, email and there is our newsletter. So don't forget, as you can see from the video here, that's our website, thewellnessplay.com. Scroll all the way down. Do me a favor, put your email address in there. It does a great job of getting the newsletter. Uh, our investigative journalist and all of our team from our graphics team, everything, put the most amazing information for you guys to do it and you get the greatest information you possibly can, once again. And we even recap this. Betsy does a wonderful job of recapping the um, video and put it into form so people can read it, because a lot of people uh, like to read things sometimes more than video. Plus, I seem to talk very fast, so it's good to put it in writing form to slow it down a little bit that way. Uh, but if you notice, when we talk about a website, my favorite part of a website is when you go to the top right and click on that little button. That little button up there, it says, find a clinic. And you get to see all the wonderful docs that are there, including, no joke, I have three of our docs sitting in here, our student interns sitting in here. That will seem, soon be docs, and they'll eventually be up there, be able to average care, because we get that little button gets hit 
so many times per month because people are trying to find our wonderful docs. So even though I do this show, it's really about having these clinics all over the world that allows me to apply this to you guys from the docs that we have over and the practitioners that we have over. They're absolutely incredible. All right. That being said, man, we got to continue. I stirred the pot a little bit over the last month when I talked about exercise and fasting and the questions and emails. Now, once again, if you do have a very important clinical question that, and you're not a patient of one of my offices, and do me a favor, you can always email me at pflynn at the wellnessway.com. Uh, but once again, if you are a patient of one of my docs, please do not email it. Ask them. They can do it. But if you do have a just general question, you can email me there because when I started to talk about fitness, when I started to talk about fasting, it opened up a huge can of worms. And I've had people not only be uh, very critical, but also very supportive to the point this week. Let me share this week. Um, I will be leaving. Travis and I actually will be heading to Phoenix. I will be in Phoenix on Wednesday and Thursday. And we got asked to be on a show that's going to uh, a woman um, from one of the Turning Point shows uh, end up having uh, played my clip about women should not fast and exercise like men. And of course, she was extremely supportive and it was kind of great and drunk. But with that support, remember, there's always a balance. Just remember this, guys. There's always a balance. There's going to be people that love what you say. And there's going to be people that hate what you say. There's going to be people that absolutely adore you and there's going to be people that hate you. There's going to be strong men and there's going to be soy boys. We understand that, okay? Now, I like the balance where more people like what I have to say and I like the more balance of strong men, but guess what happens? There is always seems to be a balance out there and that's okay. I always like it when and um, um, we have a media team and you'd be surprised how many people say, Doc, this person you know, criticized what you said. I'm great with that, you know what I'm saying? Because I always tell people, if you have something good to say, put it out there and let people decide. And let people debate your ideas. I love when people try to debate my ideas. Um, you know, and they can be even critical of them. Remember that that's okay. If you're gonna do something of significance, you're going to have to be prepared for some words you don't like. Because people don't like everything you have to say. I, I get that. I'm totally, I'm totally cool with that. If that was the case, if I worried about people say, I would never done anything in my life. <laughs> so that was the idea for things. And speaking of that, as I talked about the thyroid last week, there were some things I said like, oh my goodness, you're extremely critical of the doctors that give advice about it. Yes, I did, and I can prove it to you why some of the most detrimental things you get is advice from doctors. So that being said, we're gonna continue our series on the thyroid. As you can see, it's one of our wonderful perspectives on there. Uh, once again, we gave away that wonderful test and that lab last week, and we're gonna do the same thing this week. So all of you guys that are commenting in the website at adp.thewellnessway.com, keep on commenting. If you guys are on Instagram, keep on commenting. Let us know that you would like to possibly win a test and a book, and we'll do that. So it's quite interesting because if you take a look at this picture right here, I think it's significant. There's a picture of the thyroid gland. Man, in reference to the body, it seems so small. It does. But it seems small because of the perspective that people have when it comes to endocrine glands, when it comes to hormone-producing glands. Because people say, well, doc, it has a big impact. Well, the reason why it has a big impact is because of how we look at the body. See, if you look at a body part, and let's say it's even small, let's say like the appendix, they would say, it's insignificant. Well, that's not true. It's only insignificant when you look at the total aspect of just one individual organ. But if you look at how it affects all the organ systems, a small gland can be very effective on the whole body. That's why the thyroid gland can, I'm gonna show you some of the just the basic functions of the thyroid gland, but it can affect so many tissues. And the reason why I bring that up is always remember, when I started to really think about hormones itself, and I started to dig deep and going, okay, listen, um, Christy had endometriosis, which is an endocrine problem. And it's usually an endocrine problem based on estrogens. So therefore, when I started to, to research back in the 90s and stuff, which seems like a long time ago, man, I just realized, I, pra I practiced, started practicing in the last century. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was a while ago, 1999. And I guess it was the end of the last century, but it was still the last century. But when I did that, I started to investigate. I started to dig deep. Now, why? Why did I dig deep? Because once again, there was problems not being answered. I've always said this, and this uh, equates to every area of life, no matter what your profession is. If you become a problem solver, you will be able to, to experience wonderful things in your life because people love having their problems solved. So when I looked at certain healthcare conditions, 
that people were suffering with massively, and that's why I really focus on the female hormone realm, is I realized uh, that, guess what? Our current healthcare system has no uh, way of, uh, of resolving those problems, and so that's why I dug deep and said, here we go. Now, that was even based on just how I started to create the hormone testing, how I started to create the hormone labs. Now, it wasn't that I created the testing itself. I just looked and said, here's what we need to test to have a great evaluation. Because if you look at this little organ here, it can have such a significant, significant effect on the body. You know it seems so insignificant. It's not because of things like this. If we look at this lab, I talked about, or excuse me, look at this test. <laughs> Wait, let me get Look at this research. All it really showed was, once again, sex hormone binding globulin and thyroxine binding globulin levels in, once again, premature budding, you know, both in little girls and little boys. Um, and what it did is what it did, it actually started to show that, hey, listen, that there was a connection between not only the anabolic sex hormones of a young girl or a young boy, but also the thyroid hormones. I was like, hold the phone. That means that this organ or any other organ the appendix, the gallbladder, you know, your liver, your kidney. Um, we sometimes rank organs based on their ability to keep us alive, but it doesn't mean they're, they're insignificant. That's why when, even when I started practice, they used to teach people, and you guys have heard this said if you are over 30 years old, the only known useless organ in the body is the, see, a lot of you guys have said it, the appendix. It's not useless. If it was so useless, why is it if it goes bad? It can kill you. It's not useless. But if you look at this, and that's why I love looking at the body in my analogies, you look at the, the body like a Swiss watch. See, if you look at the thyroid just as a one individual organ, it seems insignificant. But if you start to put it together in its whole, and that's where even the term holistic came from, there's a viewpoint understanding that, listen, these things really affect everything. And even how that organ itself works is based on this principle right here. It really is. All those gears working together. Let me, let me give you an explanation. A lot of people, once again, we talked about last week, will go to their doctor and say, hey, doc, they told me my thyroid is normal. It's normal. Well, is that true? Because when I look at labs, they're basing it on one major marker, TSH. So as I explained last uh, week, I had a person Instagram me, and they even send me their labs, and I said, listen, doc, my, thyroid, my doctor said my thyroid is normal. And I said, can I see your labs? Well, they sent it to me, and guess what happened? is I said, okay, uh, great. Uh, I see there's some normal things on your labs, but where are your thyroid labs? And they said, it's right there. And I said, no, that's your TSH. TSH is not a thyroid hormone. It's a gear that affects the thyroid, but it's not a thyroid hormone. As you can see right here, just from our graphic last week, you can see that the pituitary releases a thyroid stimulating hormone. Pituitary is a brain issue, okay? Pituitary is a gland that extends from the brain. So it's really a brain hormone telling the thyroid to produce some of our hormones there. And you can see everything from T4, T3, to calcitonin, some other hormones that are produced. So I tell people this is not a, 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 a controversial thing. TSH is not a thyroid hormone. It's not at all. It's actually a pituitary hormone, which I believe is very significant to have measured. But when somebody tells me that, guess what? that this is the major hormone they base everything off of as far as medication, it doesn't make any sense to me. I believe it's such an incomplete view considering the fact that we're trying to produce certain hormones and those should be measured also. But we really covered last week one of the major issues that is significant when it does come to the thyroid is the things that affect it. There's other gears that can throw it off. And that's why if you notice the number one thing that they showed throws off is some form of immune factor, autoimmunity. Now, if you look at the immune conditions that are suffering from over the last you know, 10 years, it's significant that some of those top autoimmune conditions are two of the top five are actually, two of the top four are actually thyroid ones. They're thyroid issues, okay? That's significant. So this little gland that seems like it's just a little thing sitting in your throat can have a, a catastrophic effect on your body, both hyper or hypo, if it goes badly. And see what happens is on the autoimmune conditions, they say, oh my goodness, the immune system makes a mistake. It makes a mistake, it makes a mistake. Well, that's where one of the perspectives of why I believe they have it wrong. Here we go. Your body did not make a mistake. And if you remember, I went through in great detail last week. If you didn't watch it, please go back and watch it. But autoimmune, let me read this to you very slowly because I want you to understand that. Your body didn't make a mistake. With your current perspective and guidance, you have been convinced you have healthy tissue, but your immune system recognized you have sick, abnormal, damaged tissue and does a great job of eliminating it. 
because it's intelligent, okay? Now, what I'm trying to show you is this, is they don't dig deep on the perspective of why the thyroid went to attack the thyroid and clear out bad tissue because they assume that if you don't have a cancer or a cyst that everything is normal. But that's not true. You can have a significant amount of biochemical reactions happening within the thyroid. I use the example of a paper mill and things going in, there's waste product and one skin. If, there's, if, the, if the inside of the paper mill gets very dirty, there has to be some cleaners that come in. That's where some of the immune responses happen. Well, that's significant because what it does, it actually shows that, listen, it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a mistake because you know why? The body is very intelligent and knows what it's doing. So if you look at this right here, I made a very bold statement. Your body did not make a mistake. Your doctor's advice did. And that's why even though we have more medical technology, we have more natural technology, we have more everything in history, yet people continue, continue to degenerate and get worse. I'm very proud of the fact that we have come along with a perspective that's helped people recover from some of the most detrimental healthcare conditions based on one thing, the perspective. So when I was interviewed by the doctor from India on Thursday, and I said, I think it was put Friday, I wondered why I had so many more people following me from all over the country, all over the world, is because the perspective. That was the biggest thing, because if I can get you to change your thinking a little bit, and that's why I like to teach, that's why this show is not a podcast, you know what I'm saying? It's meant to teach and give you some things so you can lead you through some of these adventures to see once again where this can apply to you. Now, that being said, I think it's time now to go to part two of the thyroid, so let's now get into our perspective. All right, I actually love that intro. Feels like you're walking on stage. It's pretty great, even though I'm not moving. Um, anyways, when it does come to the thyroid, it's very important to see all these things, but I believe that as we move into part two, there's some significant things that you can ask yourself sitting there right now, which is so important for you to see the perspective of your thyroid, and here it is. There are four questions you must ask about your thyroid, four, and we're gonna go through those. Now, once again, we've already covered some of them during the last show, but we're gonna kinda go in detail because here's what happens. If you really go to test the thyroid and you look at it from a Swiss watch principle, this is significant. This is significant. Look at the amount of markers that when people, this is one of the labs I call just the thyroid hormones. Now, once again, that was based on looking from just back in a 19, 1988 uh, study talking about all these gears kinda working together, some of the principles I came up with. And that's why I was like, oh my goodness, I had a light bulb moment. I had a light bulb moment. Now, what do you mean? Now, I started to think about this, and because if you look at some of the basic markers, because let's even do this. Today, you'll get a little bit more testing done by even your average GP, general practitioner, because they'll do TSH, and then they start doing T4 and T3, but then they realize that there's free T4 and free T3, so sometimes doctors will, by nature, do TSH and free T4 and free T3, but then once again, those are factors that at least they're starting to get some thyroid hormones. But once again, let me go through this. The testing is dramatically incomplete. Why is it incomplete? Because as I had those light bulb moments, I realized that when you think like the body like a Swiss watch, there's multiple gears that are going to affect it. Let me say it again, there's gonna be multiple gears that affect it. And there's one thing that I was sitting down um, and I remember this, I was sitting down reading the book because remember, a lot of this stuff wasn't on the internet. It wasn't. So when I pull up internet references, I'm trying to show you that you could do this right now with your phone, you could do this on your laptop, you can do this your own research and that's the neat part why I start to pull up websites for you so you can just check it out, including PubMed, which is just the medical library where they pull a lot of the research off of. But I wanna show you something. I had that light bulb moment and I said, listen, hold the phone. If the thyroid can be affected by the immune system, which shows that multiple gears interact. Can other organs affect it? There has to be. There has to be more than just the immune system, even though that's, that's the majority of problems come from an autoimmune response, but there had to be more. So I started to continue to read. Now why? Because when I give certain products, so for example, if I give like uh, St. John's, St. John's affects a certain enzymatic pathway of what's called the cytochrome P450 3 or 4 pathway. Well, once again, there's medications that can both induce it and inhibit it. So that's why they'll say that there's contraindications for certain herbs like St. John's and everything because if those medications have some of the same kind of effects, there could be an interaction. Now, I kind of 
kind of find funny because when I ask a patient, what do you think an interaction is? They think like the medication and the herb are having a fight inside the body. <laughs> no, they just, they just affect the same pathways. Well, I started to think about it going, hmm, when I started to study medications a lot, something caught my attention because I was looking at the thyroid and adrenal so much that I started to go, wait, it's interesting because back then, Synthroid was the major medication, but once again, the apparent medication is also levothyroxine. So if you look at Synthroid, look at levothyroxine, they're two most commonly prescribed medications for the thyroid. So as I was studying them, now why was I studying them? I was studying them because I wanted to see what they did. I wanted to see if there was any interactions with something I gave. I want to make sure that there was no contraindications. Contraindications means if this happens, you can't do this. So I want you to just pull up something for me that you can look up by yourself. You can actually jump online and jump and take a look. And you can do, once again, the prescription digital reference, the PDR. Now, once again, all we're looking at is levothyroxine, it's drug summary. So you can even pull this up on drugs.com, you can pull this up on all the medical libraries. And one thing that was very important, because I want to say, okay, listen, Synthroid and levothyroxine, is there any contraindications? That means, can I not do something? Can I not give something? Especially, especially in our medicinal world, herbs have a very uh, a significant effect and it can actually interact with certain medications. Well, here's what I found. Now, remember, I found this back early 90s, or in the 90s, because look at this, here we go. Um, contraindication, okay? If we look at the one thing, yes, there's gl glycerin hypersensitivity because there can be ingredients in there, but there's one that I wanted to pull up for you that if you go on any medical website when, and when it comes to levothyroxine and look up contraindications, adrenal insufficiency. Adrenal insufficiency. Let me talk about that for a second. Levothyroxine is contraindicated for use in patients with diagnosed by untreated adrenal insufficiency. Okay, initiation of thyroid hormone therapy prior to initiating glucocorticoid therapy may pre uh, uh, precipitate an acute adrenal crisis in patients with adrenal insufficiency due to an increase in body's demand for adrenal hormones. Uh, treat patients with adrenal insufficiency with replacement corticosteroids prior to initiating treatment with leothroxin. Hold the phone. Stop right there. Let me paraphrase this for you. Let me paraphrase this for you. And this will change just every perspective and the confidence that you have with doctors going forward. I'm not joking. So I'm going to warn you that if you want to not lose confidence in the medical field and your endocrinologist and your OB and your general practitioner, you want to shut the, the broadcast down now because you're going to lose significant respect and trust in them from just one contraindication that you're hearing from the chiropractor when it comes to a medication. Now, I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm giving you the tools to go to the doctor and say, why? Why, doc? Why is it that I have to watch a chiropractor? Watch, once again, I just use that because they think our education comes from Cracker Jack box, uh, but it's really in depth, and plus my other educations are, are top notch. And so here's what happens walk to your doc, take these references in, go on drugs.com, go on every uh, medical website, go on levothyroxine, the drug itself, go on Synthroid itself, that way, go on even the other better forms of the medication like Nature Third or Armor, and say, Doc, here's what happens. It says if I have adrenal insufficiency, which I will show you what that is, adrenal insufficiency, that you're supposed to give me corticosteroids to bring up my adrenals before you give me this medication because it will cause an adrenal crisis, if not other healthcare problems. So that means, guys, that before they gave you that medication, they should have tested your adrenals before that even happened. Simple question for you, simple question for you. Any of you guys or gals that have been, that are taking levothyroxine, Synthroid, or any form of thyroid medication, even in its more natural form, like a glandular, like um, Armor or Nature Thoroid or NP, did your primary doctor test your adrenals before they gave it to you? They didn't, did they? That means they can cause problems. They're not even following what the drug tells you to do. Go and ask them. Go and ask them. Because I have yet, in 24 years of practice, and all the things I've dealt in the hundreds of thousands of labs that I've looked at myself, I've never seen them test it before they gave it. 
you know, they'll just test TSH, which is a pituitary hormone, and then give them medication without even testing their thyroid hormones and top of their adrenal hormones. I was like, come on guys, you're supposed to be the real doctors, the experts, and you can't even do the most basic thing that your drug tells you what to do. So now I watch this all the time. I watch this all the time because I, I just watched another um, medical person, even though they talk about nutritional things, talk about is adrenal fatigue a real thing? Well, what they mean, and, and they say, no, it's not, things like that. Well, let me, let me correct them on it. See, a lot of the natural world will use the term adrenal fatigue. Um, and on the medical side, if they don't understand the adrenals, they'll look at some of the major adrenal diseases like Atkins or Cushing. But guess what happens? There is something called adrenal insufficiency, which is equated to adrenal fatigue if you look at the criteria for it. Now, once again, I don't ever use the word adrenal fatigue because if I'm speaking to a medical group, a pharmaceutical group, um, or a scientific group, they don't really understand what that is. And that's why they'll say it doesn't exist. But adrenal insufficiency is a medical term. And let's go into the detail of it a little bit that way so you understand what adrenal insufficiency is and how to look for it. So I want to pull up John Hopkins. Now, once again, why do I pull these things out? Because I want you to show you that there's references for those. So when this guy, his name is, is Lane, and I won't go into his thing because he just seems like an angry individual all the time. He doesn't put anything out that's actually good for anybody. He just tries to argue everybody else about this stuff. And this one really nice doc put about something about adrenal fatigue and he's like, um, and he was critical of him. I'm going, dude, instead of being critical of somebody else, put some information out there and counteract his argument. You know, don't, and not just say, I don't agree with it. Um, have a solution. Remember, I always tell people, if you have a problem, come with three solutions. You're saying, otherwise you do is just talk about problems. So you sound like a complainer, all right? So let's go back to this in adrenal uh, insufficiency. Let's take a look at it. Let's read it. Adrenal insufficiency occurs when the adrenals do not make enough of the hormone cortisol. Now, once again, let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. If you look at Mayo Clinic, if you look at all the major medical um, um, uh, facilities, they don't say that you have the disease Atkins or do you have the disease Cushing's where their extremes high and low. It says right out, adrenal, put it back up there, Travis. Adrenal insufficiency occurs when the adrenal glands do not make enough hormone cortisol. You have two adrenals. They're located just above the kidneys. They work with the hypothalamus and pituitary glands in the brain. Cortisol helps break down fats, proteins, carbohydrates in the body. It, all, it also controls blood pressure and affects your immune system. Uh, uh, how your immune system works. Adrenal insufficiency can be primary, secondary. Let's just continue with that. I put a little bit closer. Primary adrenal insufficiency, known as Atkins disease. So once again, you can get severe enough to actually have a condition. It occurs when the adrenal glands are damaged. They don't make enough of hormone cortisol or um, aldosterone. The condition is rare. It may occur at any age. Now here's the other part. Secondary adrenal insufficiency. This starts when the pituitary gland doesn't make enough of the hormone ACTH. As a result, the adrenal glands do not make enough cortisol, okay? It doesn't say it doesn't make zero cortisol. It starts to get low on the ranges. It starts to become a, so low. It doesn't make enough. That's, it doesn't say that there's zero cortisol. So therefore, there's always ranges of your cortisol. Okay, let's continue. If you look at some of the symptomatology that comes about. Now, once again, this is right on John Hopkins' website. There may have mild symptoms when you are under physical stress. Each person's symptoms may vary. Symptoms may include weakness, fatigue, dizziness, dark skin, um, bluish dark color on, the, on nipples, mouth, rectum, scrotum, and vagina, weight loss, fluid loss, lack of appetite, muscle aches, upset stomach, vomiting. Let's keep on going. Okay, here we go. Vomiting, diarrhea, low blood pressure, low blood sugar in women, irregular or no menstrual cycles. Oh, there we go. We talked about that with fasting and also excessive exercise. If you cause your adrenals to go insufficient, insufficient because you are stressing your body out from, from fasting, too much workouts. Guess what happens? It can throw off your menstrual cycle. If not treated, adrenal insufficiency may lead to what? Belly fat, <laughs> okay? Severe belly pain, excess uh, weakness, low blood pressure, kidney failure, shock. Here's what happens. I highlighted the bottom part. I want you guys to see this. These symptoms may look like other health problems. See, just having a low level of cortisol can mimic so many other health problems. That's significant. Now watch this. 
Here is where I love the most because this is what I've thrived in. How is adrenal insufficiency diagnosed? Your healthcare provider will ask your medical history. You will also need an exam. Tests can diagnose adrenal insufficiency includes blood and what? Oh my goodness. Blood and urine. Just the adrenal hormones and ACTH. Well, there you go. I love doing blood work. If you look at the blood work that you saw on the thyroid, cortisol was on there. But here is that cortisol rhythm. If you look to the bottom right there, oh, this person is tanked out. This person has significant adrenal insufficiency, including to the total amount of cholesterol that she's supposed to produce through the day is extremely insufficient. This woman came in and she was having some major health issues that looked like other diseases. And what was happening is she was taking a medication, thyroid medication, and it was causing adrenal problems even greater. And I asked her, went through just what I asked you before, hey, um, can I see your adrenal test? And she's like, what are you talking about? It's like, almost like she's like, what are you talking about, Willis? You know what I'm saying? I was like, that was an 80s reference. Anyways, but the idea is this, is no. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, I'm so sorry that your doctor did not do that because they now start to cause some problems. And so I ran the labs on her. I sent it back to her. I gave it to her. I said, now go talk to your doctor about this. And he's like, yep, well, we should have ran it and this, 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 but everything will be okay. And she's like, what do you mean everything will be okay? I'm getting worse. No, 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 your T4 levels are, are getting back to normal now because we got and TSH is coming down. Like, wait, 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 I'm getting worse. I'm getting worse. And he goes, well, we can give you some corticosteroids. And see, here's what happens, my whole thing about explaining about this. This is very common practice if you have had any medication when it comes to the thyroid because they do not check this. They do not. Not only is their view and testing and perspective incomplete, so is their model. And it can lead to other healthcare problems. There's people right now taking levothyroxine that seems like they have other conditions, and it's because the thyroid medication is actually causing adrenals to be worse. It's a Swiss watch all over again. And who said so? The medication itself! It's not like I'm making this up. I'm just reading the stuff that your doctor's not. And because our perspective is this right here, we're going to think about this. Sometimes people are coming in with massive healthcare problems and don't realize it's the medication itself. So talk to your doctors about this. Say, why'd you give me this medical advice that has led to major problems? Because you gotta remember guys, this little gland that can be affected by multiple other glands that can cause other issues has major functions of the body. And take a look at these. They're, they're, they do so many things. It can affect your breathing, heart rate, heart health, cholesterol levels, nervous system, body weight, muscle strength, menstrual cycles, temperatures, digestion, bone health, development, immune system. If it's not addressed right, man, there's so many factors that can happen. You go hypo and have these problems. Man, sleep, tired, difficult to concentrate, hair problems, depression, constipation, temperature problems, frequency of heavy periods, joint pains, muscle pains, and if it goes kind of crazy, it goes the other way. Even more trouble sleeping, restless, heartbeat problems, sweating, tremors, loose stool, weight loss, weakness. Guess what? Thin skin, heat intolerance from going, your thyroid going up and down, up and down like crazy. See what happens to the thyroid can actually have a major effect if you think of the thyroid in that whole Swiss watch venue that small little gland is affected by other small glands that can have a huge effect on the body because it can affect everything. And the immune system, the adrenals, estrogens can affect this. So that's why when people say, doc, how do we check the thyroid? Instead of seeing just a couple markers on there, you see this long thing because just to focus on this right here, which is just another one skin or graphic, you can see that the brain extended the Pituitary, this, it's not separated that you would be dead. <laughs> but I just wanted to separate and show you this way. Releases that TSH down the thyroid gland and we just talk about a couple hormones there. But that right there is such an incomplete view because when you look at the thyroid, the four questions you must ask about your thyroid and here they are. Number one, do we produce enough? Do we make enough hormone? Number two, we even talked about last week. When we do get production, is there conversion from one form to another? 
Number three, we talked about last week too a little bit. Number we're going to go through all four of these over the next couple weeks also. But number three, is there destruction? Is there autoimmune process? Is there adrenal problems? And number four, what triggers these problems? What all are these factors from immune factors? Are there other things that immune factors that can trigger these, including adrenals? Absolutely, yes, 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 yes. So let's look at the four questions again. Number one, when I ask my thyroid, is it producing? Is it converting? Is there destruction? Is there interference? And if we look at this, this will really give us a evaluation that none of your doctors out there, including all of them, including what I mean is every part of every healthcare realm is not looking at. And if you can learn to look at your labs and say, can I see production there? Yes. Can I see conversion? Nope. Can I see destruction, interference? Nope, 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 nope. Because even if you can see some of the major hormones that are produced by the thyroid right here, here's some of the six hormones, T4, T3, reverse T3, T1, T2, calcitonin. Yes, those are important to measure. But I just got a simple thing to ask you when it comes to the current medical thinking of the thyroid. How can synthyroid thyrotoxin replace all these? It doesn't. So even if you just look at some production, it doesn't replace all them. Synthroid levothyroxine doesn't replace that. So how is the standard of care? Not only do not evaluate from the four questions, but then they give you something that won't even cover the production process. But they, if they can manipulate a TSH, a brain hormone, they tell you that they're the endocrine experts and they leave you in a bad state. And if they, didn't trust, uh, and they didn't address your adrenals first, they can put you in a worse state looking at other healthcare issues. See, that's why the perspective and somebody tells me that they've had their thyroid properly evaluated. I'm like, really, they have four questions? They're like, what do you mean four questions? So just that alone right there should really give you a perspective on thyroid health that nobody gives you. Now, production, let's go a little bit more in detail into it. If you just even look at the hormones itself that way, they're measurable by labs. It's quite simple. Here, look at TSH is extremely elevated. This person should be really around two. She's greater than 150. All of her rest of her hormones, T4, T3, T4 total, uptake, low, 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 low. Well, of course the brain is going to say, hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. It's screaming at the thyroid. But look at just a little bit below there. And we talked about this last week. Now this seems insignificant compared to the 6,500 that the woman that was suffering from infertility had, but she has a high autoimmune. So is there some destruction going on? Yes, this once again is an immune issue. And this is why the thyroid has a major problem. Here's another one. Let's take a list person, 37 year old, last one's 36. Once again, TSH 45, thyroid peroxidase 5,000. See, if you see the severe people that we see, it will blow your mind, it really will. These are just labs, do you understand? Know and as you can see, that was just a section of some of this production. It's much more in detail than that because here's what happens. Production is so key, but measure the production. But as you saw, there's still three other questions to help you get good hormonal health. That's why you need to investigate those things that way. And if you look, when we start production, let's just look at what T4 and T3 really means, okay? If you think about it, T4, the T stands for tyrosine. The three and four stand for the amount of iodines that attach to it. Now, are there other molecules that are needed for it? Absolutely. But let's just take a look at this in general. Tyrosine, it's the backbone. It really is. Okay, so when you look at it, you go, okay, here we go. There's a tyrosine molecule. Now, if an iodine pops on there, okay, guess what it does? There's a T1, okay? It's called monoidotyrosine. Now, I don't know what happened to my graphic, but all of a sudden the iodine went a little crazy. It's supposed to be on the other side. <laughs> and it's called dye. So there's, there's, there's a T2. Just to give you an example. See that first one's supposed to be attached to that little nice little hexagon there. Okay? A little crazy. But then what happens is this. Then there's your, once again, there's your T2. All right? Now what happens is this. T4. You have four of those iodines onto a couple tyrosine molecules. And then it converts. It converts, it goes to the liver, it goes to the kidneys and becomes its active form T3. And as you can see, guess what happens? Oh, apologize, let's go back here. T3, and there's your active form that is really great with your metabolism, ladies. But if stress comes in, if the adrenals are pumping out a ton of cortisol, what will happen is it'll reverse and now the lock and key doesn't work anymore. And that's why 
a lot of times women will have normal T4 and normal T3, but their reverse T3 will be so high because of cortisol and stress that it takes their thyroid hormone and converts it into a form that's not usable and inactive. Now, if you think about this, there's other things you need for production. Iron, iodine, tyrosine, zinc, selenium, the vitamins B, E, C, and D, all significant and important for this. It's really important to know that iodine is one of the major factors to do it. Now, if you look at tyrosine itself, it's non-essential. Now, it doesn't mean, once again, that it doesn't need to be eaten, but it can be made by your body. But tyrosine, once again, is from the Greek word tyros, which means cheese. It was discovered. That's why cheese, organ meats, turkeys, it's a lot of animal-based products. And yes, there are, put some, I put some non-animal-based products like peanuts and almonds. There is some tyrosine in there, but your body can make it pretty easily. But you also need to eat your iodine, and that's why a lot of people that, that are from non-water-based areas, they don't get a lot of significant when it comes to iodine, because iodine, once again, you can get that from great things, and the number one the place to get it is from sea kelp. But also cod, shrimp, scallops, you know, fishes that way. You can get a little bit from cranberries, strawberries, and eggs, and turkey, and prunes. But the idea is this. Your sea kelp is by far your best thing. That's why when we produce ours, we actually have it. Because if you're deficient in iodine, a lot of times you can't make thyroid hormone. If you're deficient, once again, that's why people start to get goiters. If you look at the RDAs, they say that you should have 150 micrograms of iodine per day. That's extremely low. Extremely low. The iodine experts out there say that even your breast tissue ladies can actually use up to 6 milligrams per day. If you look at the only really known cause of fibrocystic breast disease, if you happen to look it up right now, it'll show you a major iodine deficiency. Iodine is very good at keeping estrogens under control. Iodine is also very important for the immune response. It's very, it's very um, antiseptic, which means this. If you ever see somebody has had a surgery and you, they were cut, you can see that's a purplish color on their skin. What did they put on there for antimicrobial purposes? Iodine. Iodine is significant when it comes to that. Now, as you guys know, I am massively into organ meats. I always have been since I was back in my nutrition days, back in early college, because when I read my nutrition books, I was sitting through all my classes, the most nutrient dense things on the planet are still organ meats. There's nothing that compares to them. Yes, there might be some other vitamins and stuff that may have a little bit more in other things, but organ meats dominate as the most nutrient dense foods in the planet. So therefore, that's why when there's no saying in nutrition that says like heals like. That means if I have fatty liver disease, the one thing that I would probably want to eat to help my liver regenerate and repair would be called what? Liver. Well, that's why, for example, if I have a thyroid issue, I would want to do a thyroid gland. Now, I will tell you this. Um, this is, you need to get medical advice, I would say, from an integrative NP or integrative doctor that can prescribe things. But there's some people that have thyroids removed. There's some people that have thyroid cancer. Some people have major cysts. They need to get rid of it. Then they need to go to more of like an armor or nature thyroid or NP. Um, and they can get that from more of an integrative doctor because that's a medication you have to get from a pharmacy. But if you're trying to help your thyroid regenerate, rebuild, if you still have it, that's why I love skin. That's why I have a thyroid glandular. It's one thing that I take every day. Why? Trying to keep my thyroid health great. Now, that's important for that to happen because it's just doing things to help your body to regenerate. It's significant. Now, it's really funny because you know what happened? I had another light bulb moment, okay? Because what I started to realize is going, okay, what if I could not only support the thyroid for its production, but I could start to support the other organs so all the gears kind of work more synergistically when it does come to thyroid health. And I said, huh, I'm going to try to assist several of these systems. And that's why if you see some of the major medical research out there, efficacy and safety of astrogonal root in the subclinical hypothyroid patient, a double blind randomized placebo controlled trial. Now this really made me upset because they shared the conclusion to the world. But if you don't read the research article in detail, this is just an abstract. I subscribe to a ton of journals. So I read the full things from head to toe. I read every graph. I look at things. And I just had to highlight this here because people sometimes will skip the results or skip the design or skip the objectives. But I want to show you the results here. Eight weeks of treatment. So eight weeks of treatment with ashwagandha improved serum TSH, T4, 
and uh, uh, T3 and levels significantly compared to placebo. Do you see that? Significantly. Ashkenazi treatment effectively normalized the serum thyroid um, indices during the eight week treatment period in a significant manner. Okay, and they showed the major graphs of how it really helped to normalize that because ashwagandha has an effect on multiple tissues, especially the adrenal. That's why it's known as one of the best stress adaptogens. It also has a major effect on the thyroid itself by even giving certain constituents and nutrients that are needed for it. It also protects other organs that are needed for that whole Swiss watch principle. But let's go down to the conclusion. That's why my arrow says, really? Treatment of ashwagandha may be beneficial for normalizing thyroid. <laughs> may. You see, if you, it's kind of like I downplayed. It talked about within the graphs and in the stuff, there was a significant normalizing. Like, well, I may do this. It's like there was zero excitement. There was zero factors. And that's why I tell people, look at ashwagandha, it's one of those major adaptogen effects. It creates for us to deal with stress better. It promotes normal thyroid function. It also supports normal adrenal function. See, all these things are put together from the perspective of there's four questions you need to ask, but then you have to also look at the thyroid being more like a Swiss watch, where it seemed like a little organ within the gland, within the throat, but guess what? It's affected by adrenals, affected by the immune system, affected by the heart, affected by the kidneys, affected by this conversion within the, within the liver itself. So all these gears are significantly working and, and, and all talking together. And it's why when I see somebody that comes in with thyroid labs of TSH, and even if they did T4 and T3, and even did T4, our free T4, the current medical approach to the thyroid is extremely incomplete. How can we say we're the experts? I mean, medical system. How can they say that you're normal? How can they say that, um, that you need to take this medication? How can they say that you need to stay on this rest of your life? How can they say that holistic and alternative things don't make a difference? How can they say that when their view and their perspective of the body is so incomplete, including their diagnostics? I don't get it. I don't. And then this morning, as I just finished up, I threw on Instagram for a second. And this young lady named Shelly sent me a message, Doc, and she said, Doc, I've been watching your stuff. And I think I came up with a quote with you for you, so I'm going to share her quote. It said, if you don't know what you've got, how do you know what you need? That was perfect for today. If you don't evaluate the patient from the way that we do, how do you know what they need? And on top of it, somebody convinced me that the thyroid has issues because it lacks a chemical called levothyroxine synthroid. Please try to convince me on that. Please try to convince any sane or any logical human being that that is a treatment that they should be on the rest of their life. Heck, I can even convince somebody by not giving them medical advice that maybe if you had thyroid cancer or a cyst and your thyroid is removed, that maybe you should go talk to an integrative MD or an integrative doctor that will give you something that's a little bit safer of having all the hormones in more like, more like uh, armor and get them to prescribe you something and get their medical advice because it just be a little bit better. See, that's the one thing I like about it because when you look at our lab here, it's taking all that in perspective. The four questions are answered within these kind of labs. It really is because those four questions are production, conversion, destruction, interference. And I'm excited for next week. Oh, I have to change that. I will not be here next week. I think Nicole... Our NP, who could prescribe a person armor, she'll probably talk about it next week. But the idea is this, she will be doing the continuation of the thyroid gland itself. I will be gone. I will be speaking in Phoenix on Thursday. And then that afternoon I fly out to Hawaii and I'll be there for about 12 days. Um, yes, I think I have to shoot the show before I leave and yeah, that'll be kind of cool. But Nicole will be doing next week and then the week after that, I think I will be doing that, but I will either be doing it live from, from Hawaii or I'm gonna have to record it, one of the two. But to give you an idea of the shows to come is even based on, we talk about, go back to those four questions there for a second, Travis. Let's look at the one thing it says, interference. What can be 
interfering with how the thyroid gland works? Well, let's take a look. Fluoride exposure and hypothyroidism in a Canadian pregnancy cohort. Do you understand bromine? Do you understand fluoride? Do you understand mercury? Do you understand there's a lot of chemicals that can interfere with not only the conversion, but also can interfere with the production. It all can cause an autoimmune response by these things. And once again, what they showed was in the study, and we'll go into it in detail, fluoride, which they think is healthy for you to spray on your teeth, because once again, a dentist will try to convince you that fluoride is great for your teeth. But that's like saying an aspirin is good for the heart. It may not have a negative effect on the heart, but that aspirin can have a negative effect on the brain. The fluoride may have no negative effect on the teeth, but it destroys other organs. See, that's why if you don't have the Swiss watch principle, I don't believe any medical professional, including a dentist, now biological dentists say, well, I don't like fluoride because once again, they might, might make your teeth a little bit stronger, but you can get that from other things. But on top of it, it's gonna damage other parts of your body. See, if you always come back to, I think one of the greatest things I ever created was just even the, the concept of the Swiss watch principle is that just because one thing can do well, it doesn't mean that it won't damage other parts. Um, I didn't realize that we put out the five things that damage your brain. And I said, there's this one thing that damages your brain and the amount of responses I got, and let's just say, has something to do with popcorn. These guys know if you've been watching my stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's very brain damaging. But the idea is this, but see, let's say, well, if we jack up your immune system, it can, it can have less chance of having a virus. Sure you can. I don't deny that. No one would because you would actually see those immune cells and they're very hyper, and so therefore a virus or a bacteria any infection could be reduced. But at the cost of damaging other organs, including your brain, just like, for example, this fluoride, you can even justify density, look at better teeth, but what if it damaged your thyroid? See, that's the perspective of the Swiss watch. That's the perspective of having a fire department, a carpenter. That's the perspective that we have that makes this show so popular all over the world. I'm not saying that medicine shouldn't be used at certain times. Get medical advice from some medical person. But when you get that medical advice, don't take it as gospel. Because when I first started practice, there was Jesus and the medical doctor. Well, because of the internet, and especially it happened over the last three years, that perspective has changed. Our audience has grown all over the world. Our audience has increased by the millions. Um, our clinics have increased massively all over the country and hopefully in the next five years all over the world. And it's because, once again, if we look at what's happened with thyroid health, what's happened any health in general, it's getting worse out there. So I'm hoping these perspectives help you, guide you in a great way that you can make decisions yourself. I tell people, I'm just giving you some ideas. If somebody has a different idea, share it and you get to make the choice. And I like that about it. I love choice. So thank you for choosing to watch today. Thank you for choosing to send me a message. Thank you for choosing to do the things that you need to be healthy because I appreciate it. I appreciate the time, appreciate the comments. Do me a favor, definitely leave a comment below because we're gonna give away another lab and a book for the person that we believe. Let us know why you need it. And if you're on Instagram, comment there. If you're on the adp.wellnessway.com or TikTok or all the platforms are going, uh, comment there and we would love to hear from you and hopefully we can put you in the right direction. So thanks for choosing to watch today. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. We will see you next week. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website. A Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources to share and explore. A different perspective is leading a health revolution.